What's up, everybody? We're back here with the War Podcast. We're excited to be here. Um, we got an um, awesome guest on here today, um, Cameron Benedict. Um, and Don, this is Don's buddy. And Don, I don't, why don't you talk about sure. it? Sure. Absolutely. So I've known Cameron a couple years now. Um, uh, maybe I'll let him kind of talk about how we how we how we got inter- how we met each other. But what I've I've seen Cameron through the ups and downs. You know, I saw him when he was ready to get sober. Then he was you know able to do that. Then he fell, tried it again, fell, and then ultimately uh, you know did it in a you know in a, in a way that he can share with you. And and uh, you know a lot of the things we talk about on this podcast. So as you guys know. Our mission is is to provide something beneficial for people out there that can't afford treatment or anything like that. And so I think Cameron will be able to share some things with you. He also has a company uh, that he's he's getting ready to start, a retail store that, um, you know, he has some information that he'll share about that. But most importantly, like the, you know, the science behind some things that he's found beneficial in his recovery as well. So without further ado, I'll, I'll introduce Cameron. Uh, <coughs> yeah, thanks, Don. Uh, like hey, absolutely. Said. Met you what two, two and a half years ago? Yeah. Uh, where was I at? Provo. Provo Canyon. Provo Canyon. Where'd right? you grow up at? Where'd you grow up? I grew up all around, mainly in Price, Utah. Oh, I grew did up you down grew up in Price? Yeah. Yeah, dude. yeah. Going to the canal, motocross. Um, yeah. Doing what kids do, you That's know, back sick. before the internet and yeah. apps, you know, I gotta well, actually be a kid. So. Well, you, what? You're you're 24. Uh, 25. Oh yeah, so, nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I grew up in Price. I've lived in Utah most of my life, um, but also all around. I've lived in Denver, uh, Michigan. I uh, went to high school in Idaho. Did so you? Came back down. What part here. of Idaho? Oh shit. Uh, Income. Income. Right outside that of by you. Yeah, yeah, that was like some, similar to my story too. I went to high school in Sun Valley. Mm-hmm. Where's Sun Valley? Uh, like Haley, Ketchum. It's like a, like an hour north of Twin Falls. Is it? Yeah, on the oh, 75. Wow. Yeah. Our stories are really similar. Yeah, so that, that's crazy. Yeah, it's I've, cool I've heard yours, here. right? Yeah. I, yeah, I listen to your whole story and your podcast, and yeah, that's oh, interesting, yeah, dude. dude. It's crazy, because yeah, you were you were up here, man. You experienced a lot, and we're out in California. You know what I mean? Just doing crazy stuff. I wasn't yeah that it's, adventurous. Yeah, what'd you get into? I heroin. You ended up getting into heroin. Opiates, yeah. Uh, just <clears throat> partied in high school. Um, right. Best friend had a prescription for opiates and just yeah. started that way and then started just like IV pills pills. Yeah. Then started IV use at 16 or 17. Right. Um, then got into heroin after that and just, you know, so you were shooting pills uh-huh. at 16. That's balls. Uh-huh. Wow. Well, the first That's time like I ever a shot rapid up progression for it sure. very. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was weird because I like the first time I ever did IV, I, IV use, it was heroin and I overdosed and then yeah, I don't. I just went straight to it. So. Um, so just just doing like lower tab. What kind of pills? Do just you like start? Hi- hydrocodone and right. sets and you know just, right. just seven fives or whatever you would get. And then it just went right into. And then like, right, yeah. did, did you go to blues or did you go to Roxy's? Did you yeah. get into that? No, like, actually, so Roxy's were my my drug of choice. Um, right. But I got into that after I'd already done uh, heroin. So oh, I prefer really? Roxy's over. Yeah. So were you shooting that's Roxy's? Wild. Yeah. First time as an overdose. That that's an addict brain right there. Maybe <laughs> I should try it again. I know. I know. That sucked. Let's well, do it again. It it took me over a year to get back to it and and do it again. But yeah, I mean, it's just it's just an addict mentality. I wanted to go that far. I wanted to take my high as 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 far as I could. You yeah. Know what I right. Mean? So sorry. Just no, like, go ahead. I feel like I'm kind of hunched. Yeah, we can. We can. Yeah, we can. Increase okay, the height too. That, that bottom uh, too. If you unscrew the, if you unscrew you the bottom like that, move you your can make it your box taller. Up. There you go. Okay, is okay. that better? You yeah, can make yeah, it yeah. taller also if you want to unscrew right here, and then lift this out. I think I think that that's better. Yeah, that's good. Me now? Yeah, yeah. yeah so good. I just want my mouth on. Yeah, just yeah, keep yeah, it just close. Kind of close to it. <laughs> yeah, as close as possible. Especially because there's people in the gym. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No big deal, but. Dang, that's wild, bro. Right. So young ass kids, 16 year old, 16, 17 year olds start doing heroin. Slamming yeah. stuff. Yeah. Well, all my friends were doing it, you know? And then I, I, was I just can't understand that. I mean, there's, it just baffles me. That so you six, were in Idaho when young, that happened? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, yeah, my, my two, two of my best friends were doing it. They were twins. Um, they were driving to Logan. 
they had a cousin of Logan that was doing it. So, right. and I heard, I'm like, hell yeah, you know, I want to try it. Right. Frank would have been jealous if he had to connect in Logan. Yeah, <laughs> this guy's stories of having to drive back, puking to Salt Lake. <laughs> Oh, yeah, dude, that was wild. If you had Logan, man, you'd have been set. Yeah. Logan, you How far away were you from Logan? Like an hour and a half. Okay, so you, were you up kind of, is Income up kind of by like Preston? Like Grace and yeah. Preston, yeah. Idaho? Yeah, you just stay on I-15 longer. Oh, you go okay, north a little further. bit longer. Uh-huh. Okay. It's, it's right by Pocatello. Oh, you know Pocatello okay, yeah, is. I know okay. what Pocatello is. Yeah, so it's like 10 minutes south of Pokey. Jeez. Um, yeah. yeah, that's wild, because I remember I got into like opiates in high school, you know, just same thing where it's people's prescriptions to Vicodin and Percocet and stuff like that. But I, I didn't get into heroin until I was like, you know, way later. I mean, I smoked it for the first time at 18 and then didn't use a needle until I was like, you know, probably 23, 24 or something like that. Wow. See, I, I never just, went, I never smoked it either. Like I never, cause that's usually the progression, right? Right. You get into pills for a while and then you start smoking pills and then you start smoking heroin. It's cheaper. Yeah. Uh, and then you graduate up to the IV use and that's usually, you know, you start mixing in other drugs. That shit scared me. Like, yeah. I've hated needles my whole life. It's <laughs> funny saying that now, but, like, I never thought I would shoot up. Yeah. I was always, like, hating shots and getting my blood drawn. I'd freak out, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I was the same way. Like, that's why I never hang. put one in there. At, you know, really? At least from that. At least from yeah. heroin, yeah. That's how I felt until, until all of a sudden I didn't feel it. that way anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> until you're at that point where it's like, yeah. okay. I knew it would be no going back. It's funny hearing different people's stories, though, and the progressions, like how they got there, because all of our backgrounds and, like, you know, the drug use history might, like, there's a lot of similarities, obviously, in the way we felt and the way we used, but, like, the details are different. You know, you said, like, you never smoked it. You just went straight to shooting. Like, that reminds me of, I had this buddy that... The first drug he ever did was like cocaine before he smoked weed or drank. Like when <laughs> oh, he was, really? He was in middle school, he did cocaine. I'm like, that's so fucking Did a family yeah, member have it or oh, something? Wow. Or? Yeah, it was like his older brother would like deal it and stuff. So he like it tried was just that. there. Yeah, I'm but, in seventh grade doing yeah, mine. Exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> hasn't even smoked a joint or anything yet, going straight to cocaine. And that one's scary because that's like up your nose. Like when you're a kid, like you yeah, still. Like, yeah, that's snorting it. it. You're yeah. not like swallowing it. That's yeah. just straight to the point. Yeah. It is. The progressions are crazy. Yeah, it's just funny like hearing different people's stories and how they like got into it and you know what happened because like i said there's lots of similarities but there's differences too that's so true yeah so what happened what happened after that like i mean did you get in trouble with the law i mean what yeah uh yeah i moved to from idaho to utah when i was 17 i lived with my mom that's when my addiction really like took a forefront in my life right i could have justified it and saw it as partying up until that point i think right. um i knew i mean now i know it was more of a it was a problem right it wasn't serious until i moved to utah at 17. um and then yeah just progressed on from there i went to my first rehab at 18. uh i had a little lunch box i've always worked construction and always right. had a lunch box you know right. take my lunch with me but uh and that's where i would stash all my rigs and stuff too right. so my mom found that called my dad my dad drove down from idaho and then they took me to highland ridge when oh, i was 18. The highland ridge yeah oh so you just went to like the hospital yeah like i went straight into the detox and then their 30-day program <laughs> okay and then good. got out and didn't take it seriously didn't really give a fuck yeah what did that look so, like can i swear you? Can yeah. I swear? yeah you're good yeah. okay yeah <laughs> um what did that look like for you like how did you feel about going to rehab like at 18. did you think you needed it or like you said you good didn't question. take it seriously <laughs> yeah um i I mean, at that point, I mean, I've always been a pretty rational thinker. So I like, I mean, I, I've got rigs in my car, you know, I know yeah. that I'm pretty fucking extreme at this point. Yeah. Um, I feel like shit, you know, I'm obviously depressed at that point. I don't, I don't think anyone that's resorting to those tools for fulfillment could not be depressed. Right. You know what I mean? So, and my dad drove down, you know, I wasn't combative at the time. I'm like, I'll just go try it. I'll see how it goes and then I'll get out. Okay. Um, so, yeah. And so you did, so you had that residue. So what'd you do? You went in for 30 days and then got out and went and used again? Yeah, I think like the day I got out or the day yeah. after. I, I didn't, I mean, it was like, I took it as a party in there, you know? I met some chicks, you know, yeah. bullshitted with. 18 year old kid, yeah, young ass, ass kid. Yeah, I met, a, I met a stripper in there actually, <laughs> so. Yeah. Rehab's cool. kind of like a vacation, especially when you're at that age. And For like in that sure. mindset, it's like yeah. you have a break from your life. You don't have to go to school or work. You just 
get told when to do things. Oh, I got yeah. this class and you're just hanging out with other people like bullshit it's and like smoking a, cigarettes. Like, and you're not even 21 yet. No. So you're yeah. like, well, I don't even have a problem yet. Like, cause I can still drink here in a few years. Yeah. Like, I know it's adult daycare is what it, it really, really is, is, dude. It's like, but jail, if you're at Highland Ridge, cause you got fucking three levels of security to go through to get out. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, I mean, those lockdown ones, especially that age, I'm sure it felt like. Wow. You know, yeah. But jail for sure. Young ass kids are so hard to get off a of heroin. Yeah. Like 18, like you, like you know what I'm saying? Like Absolutely. When you're 18 like that. And hard. you already have a couple years in, you know? It's hard to get them off using. anything. It's really yeah, hard to anything. pitch the idea to a young kid, like, hey, you should be sober. <laughs> like, you have you, all you this. You should like, find a higher yeah. power. Yeah. Or, uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Well, like, my, my brother's 18 right now, and I'm having all of these talks with him. Oh, man. And right. he's into weed, too. You yeah. know, which isn't, weed isn't, you know, it's not right. a big deal. Right. To me, I, I'm biased, right? It's right. weed. Right. But like he's he's ripping dabs every day. Oh, just, just those dabs. See, that's different, that's different. though. Don't you think? That's way different because yeah, that's it's you know, 90%. it's not weed. It's yeah, just freaking. It's crack version of weed. Yeah. Like I mean, when you're, you you're stop re- that, you can get like physical symptoms of withdrawal, which yeah. is like funny. Like everyone says, weed's not addictive, which <clears throat> for me it was. Like when I was in high school, I remember I said yeah, I tried too. to stop smoking weed for a month and I made it three days. But it's like when I stopped, it was like a mental thing. But like I know people that smoke dabs that when they try to stop, they're sweating and they can't dang. sleep. Why don't we I'm tell the like uh, tell withdrawals? the tell the listeners what dabs are? Some may not know. So dabs are just a super concentrated thick oil of THC. They're almost a hundred percent THC, aren't they? Right. I think you, so. You it's have to thing. vaporize it to smoke it. Mm-hmm. Um, you heat up a piece Blow of glass torch or whatever. Or whatever. Torch, yeah. Yeah. So that was some shit. I went over to my buddy's house and. He'd always just been up smoking weed. He's got kids and stuff. He just, you know, come home and smoke a little bit in his garage and whatever, you know. Right. And I go over there and he's had, he's like, I'm doing, you know, smoking this shatter, you know, or whatever. <laughs> and I go in his, you know, he's got family and stuff. And we go out into his garage and he pulls out this big blowtorch. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, bro. Even though this is still weed, this is still dark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got your family inside. Now you got a blowtorch. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I yeah. just didn't raisin, like that. I just didn't like weird, it. Dude. just didn't like yeah. the feel of it. You it's know? not like, you know, papers and a little joint anymore. Yeah, it's like you got this joint. huge rig yeah, you need and some glass tools. It looks like you're welding a, a car. You yeah. got a nail and everything. Like, it's, it's wild. Yeah. It's, it's a little much, dude. It's, yeah. it's, it, you're definitely graduated from the point of it just being, you know, a a weed hanging yeah. out and smoking weed. Right. Yeah, it's it's definitely by that point probably at least a habit or a dependence. Yeah. Or an addiction. Well no, yeah. don't well, you think you it can, changes people too? Like exactly. the dab? Yeah, because when you talk to someone who just casually smokes weed like a joint here or there, right. it's hard to tell, man. They're just yeah. a little right. chill. But if you talk to someone who's ripping dabs, their eyes are fucking hate like red and like they're just dumb. They're not they're not there. Yeah. You know? And it's just it's different. Mm-hmm. So but yeah. Yeah, hell yeah. So I'm I'm going through that with my 18 year old brother, and I'm like, so you're trying I to show him, hey, I've been there, dude. It's not. Yeah, and I also feel bad for all the people that tried to do this with me when I was 18. Yeah, right? yeah. it's yeah. fucking hell, dude. <laughs> yeah. It's like, dude, I want to beat my head on the wall yeah. like nine times a day trying to talk to this kid. But yeah, oh, wow. it's it's like you said. There's a difference with that dependence. It almost remind. It's like a different level of it. But when you said like someone that needs to use rigs every day obviously is like a little depressed Uh that's how i feel about that it's like if someone is like needing to rip dabs every day there's something that's like they're not fulfilled or not happy or content whereas i wouldn't say that about someone that you know like takes a couple puffs off a joint Mm -hmm. you know a couple times a month or something yeah Yeah. it's like exactly a couple glasses of wine a week is different than a 12 pack a night exactly yeah Yeah. Yeah. right how you use is a is a good way to identify someone that's has some problems and right? how you feel yeah. about the stopping of the usage yes is a huge thing Bingo. people yeah. that don't have problems they're like oh sure like you know sure, i'll, I'll stop. stop for a month like what's what's the problem you know but someone else that has a problem is going to be put up a fight you know like, well why why do i need yeah, to do I, that i'm not going to listen to anyone yeah, I don't, yeah. Need, <laughs> I, don't, I don't need that it reminds me of this guy that that uh that was that i was in treatment with at one point and he was talking about that same concept like kind of like how you feel about quitting and he's like he's like you know guys it took me a while here to learned that you know i i had a problem and he's like because you know what i'm just having a hard time he's an alcoholic he's like i'm having a hard time thinking that like you know that 
when my daughter gets married that I can't like have a glass of champagne to celebrate with her. He's like, but then when I realized I don't even have a daughter yet, <laughs> then he's like, that's, then I realized that there's kind of a problem. Right. <laughs> you know, it's like, you're just looking for yeah. every, like you can't stop because of something. Yeah, right. Like like every, when my, I can't have a beer at my son's wedding. <laughs> yeah. You don't I, have I'm a not kid even yet. married and yeah, you don't ex- even have a kid. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, it was so really true. Shit. But yeah, when you look at things like that, like, well, it's, it's, it, life would be unmanageable without it. Mm-hmm. Then chances are life is unmanageable with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a good point. You know? Good point, yeah. yeah. We got some kids in the program that are, uh, that I'm working with now that young ass doing dabs. And I mean, I think it just leads them to addiction, you know, like, cause you, cause oh, like you yeah. said, like earlier, like, like sets their brain up for like heavy addictive thinking compared to just smoking little bit of weed well that's know? another thing too yeah. is, is age right your yeah. mind's still developing at 18 even at yeah. 21 you know give your minds give your brain some time and behaviors too because it takes time to learn how to be an adult and how to deal with adult things right yeah because that i'm still fucking learning that i'm 25 right. because yeah. i i'm still less than two years sober so i feel like my introduction into adulthood was you know i should have been doing what i'm doing now at 18 yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? you've but done it yeah, for exactly. Sure. Yeah, yeah. But, so I'm still learning a lot, but I want to help him as best I can to not be where I'm at at 25. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah. So hell yeah, but yeah. I mean, it sounds like I mean, it sounds like you're having some some success in that area. I mean, I know you had him kind of uh, maybe. I mean, it's been a week <laughs> or two since we talked about that, but I know you had him sign a sober contract with you, like yeah. you did, because you're get, you might be giving him business opportunity. Exactly. And you want him to be sober to do that. Yeah, so so my business is still in the groundworks. It's still getting started. I, it's, it's not anything. Uh, what's the word? Physical yet? You know what I mean? I can't right. I can't touch it. But uh, what what I told him is that if he is sober for a year and he's productive and he makes good choices, I'll give him a, a good position in my business once right. that position is available. Yeah. Um, so so far he's been sober almost two months. He just got a good sales job. Oh, I yes. mean, this week he started it. So, so it's been two months yeah. already. Yeah, it's oh, been wow. two months. Yeah. That's cool. Hell yeah. So, I mean, he's killing it. He you clearly know? looks up so to you. So yeah. you got sober a couple of years ago then, huh? Less, this January, it'll be two years. <clears throat> and you went yeah. through Wasatch? Yeah, I went through. Twice. Twice. I went through, I've been through residentials probably like seven or eight times yeah me really? too yeah oh, the same thing. they say the average is seven times though so yeah. i was around the av- i'm just an average <laughs> yeah. you know just an right. average <laughs> addict you know what i mean right yeah. yeah damn dude it's almost like the cycle where you get like used to it yeah where it's like oh i fucked up again like time to time to go back into rehab uh-huh. and it's like a normal um, it's like it's exactly. like the season it's like it's winter um, now it's rehab season yeah I'm going, yeah I'm you're going. used to it's going back to school again yeah, yeah. Right. it's like school season <laughs> going back to daycare right. so what Mom. turned it what turned it over for you like this last time like did, what, what you just were done or uh, well so this is obviously the most time you put together yeah definitely um dude and that has been the hardest question for me to answer because really? I, I don't know exactly what it was. I mean, I can, I can kind of assume. I mean, they, they took me in there the second time I went to Wasatch. When I got in there, they were super combative with me and like took like almost a military approach with me. They broke me down, and that's well, what yeah, I it was. Needed. It was hard to even get you back in the second time. Was it? Yeah. Well, I mean, in, yeah, in the sense that. Oh, you, when you talking to me? Yeah. Well, that yeah. part too. Well, no, I think the second time was easier getting you in, like. Cause you took that advice to talk to your boss and things like that. Yeah. But the first time when I was like trying to show it, when I first met him, dude, I walk into the, his room. First thing he does is he's like, grabs the pamphlet out of my hand. He's like, what's this shit? <laughs> like, all right, well, so what, what do you guys do here? That's different. Right. You know, like it was that whole attitude. <laughs> and then yeah. like, then, then we went and we had, you know, got him in. He did well. But I, the second time is because you, everyone believed in you and like everyone did believe in you. Yeah. You know, like, so I think you shot, like, you know, you have, you have charisma. Like people were really like, oh, you're going to be the one that, you're going to be one of the ones that make it. Yeah. That is great. The amount of support from Wasatch was amazing. I still, I love every single person there. I don't have beef with anyone. All right. Um, my therapist, I mean, I attribute it to him because he was able to say to me what I needed to hear and how I needed to hear it. Yeah. Who know? was it? Todd or uh, Jed. Jed. Oh, Jed. What's up, Jed. Jed? Jed just texted me yesterday. He did. Shout out. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I fucking love Jed, dude. I will. I will feel indebted to Jed until the day I die. He's going to like so, hearing that. Yeah. He knows yeah. that. I tell him that. And then every time I try to tell him that, he tells me to shut up. But <laughs> <laughs> fucking hear it. He, give, he does that confrontational approach, which I know you mm-hmm. said was key for you this time. Like being able to hear it kind of how that's it just, is. Yeah. That's just how what I respond to well. Um, 
my dad was a, or is a Marine. Uh, he's a super, you know, aggressive guy. So that's just, I need a direct, kind of abrasive approach when it comes to problem solving. Well, nothing helps us when you like sugarcoat it. Exactly. You know, it's like, that's what addicts and alcoholics need is like the truth and the honesty. And Absolutely. when you look at like, you know, the steps, that's like the first step is you know, like getting honest with yourself, you know, yeah. before you can get honest with like I mean, anyone when you else. you have a problem. Like, yeah, like if I you're used to sugarcoating, problem. you won't even be able to do that. Cause it's exactly. like, nah, like, even other people tell me like, I might, I should maybe change. Yeah. yeah. It's like, like no, you need people to tell you the real. I think that's the biggest problem in that industry is people trying to make you feel better instead of telling you the truth. Like, right. no, you're just being a, a piece of shit, dude. You're selfish. You're only, you're only thinking about yourself. I mean, like, just and uh, what the other side academy. Do you guys know what that is? Yeah. Yeah. That, like, so you went uh, there? No, uh -huh. <laughs> no, dude, right. that, that would have been intense. But um, the one of the guys that runs it came and spoke at Wasatch when all of this was happening with me. Right. And he basically came in and just told everyone how hard they are on their client. I don't, not even yeah. clients. Residents. Residents. Right? There, yeah. They're like, they can't talk to anyone for a year. They can't talk or see their family for a year. Yep. They can ride after a month, maybe. You know what I mean? But the reason that they were so hard on them is because when you're in that addict mindset, you're so used to like a sociopathic way of thinking where you're only thinking about yourself. Mm -hmm. And even today, I still struggle with Me that too. mindset and, you know, thinking outside of myself and bigger. And I usually feel better when I do. Um, but even today, it's hard for me to break that way of thinking all the time. Yeah. But that was the true point. That's what I saw is like, dude, like I'm being a fucking loser. I need to be accountable. You know what I mean? I need to have integrity. And another thing is I need to know who I am. So I have these rules to follow, you know what right. I mean? Um, but yeah, I think it was just that honest approach and, you know, them coming to me and being direct with me. Um, and then I also, I have two kids right. and I broke up with uh, my baby mama what, when I went back there the second time. Right. Um, and that, that's actually when it all started. I was in the, a therapy session with my baby mama and Jed um, and we're kind of talking, you know, and then they were being, they were, they were uh, pushing me really hard on my relationship and that I didn't really love my baby mama. Um, that I was in the relationship out of obligation because we have kids and she has two other kids as well. Um, and, uh, you know, I just, I swore, I sort of felt obligated to be with her. And yeah. I was arguing the point that that's not the case, but I mean, at, at the time it, it definitely was. I mean, because, you know, they say you can't love anyone else, anyone else until you learn to love yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I still needed to learn how to do. Um, but I just told her, I'm like, look, I don't love you. These are the reasons why. Um, then she got upset and she left and she was crying. And then that just, that like broke me down. That shattered me. Um, right. I don't know why. I mean, we've broken up fucking a hundred times before that, but I don't know, just that instance really just broke me down. It's so raw. And especially if you're sober and everything, that's yeah. like mm -hmm. a yeah. tough reality and situation to, to walk through. Yeah. For sure. That, yeah, for, yeah, definitely. And, um, and it probably, you weren't, you weren't saying, I don't love you as a jab, you were saying it through a therapeutic situation where you're like, I was, no, maybe I don't love you. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's confirmed by here by a therapist or it's at least echoed like to where it's like kind of real. Like, you know, you just hurt someone badly. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, cause I'm guessing she felt broken. Yeah. Um, yeah, that definitely, I mean, I put her through a lot and that was just another thing to kind of tally up. Was yeah. Here, come to a therapy session where we can talk about things, but actually I don't love you. Yeah. And that's what I'm going to tell you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. But, um, yeah, so she struggled with that a lot. Um, but yeah, I mean that, that was the instance that started it all. And I really noticed a change after that day. Wow. That's um, interesting. What's that? So what have you been doing? Like, so two years, you mean you're hitting meetings? No, man. No I don't meetings. do. You exercise. I mean, you look like you exercise. What, I mean, what kind of, what is your, what does your day look like? Your treatment plan kind of. Um, so, I mean, I take, right now I've been slacking the past couple months. Um, right. But I take physical, just activity very seriously. I was talking to a. Uh, Don earlier about David Goggins and I think you said you know oh, yeah. David Goggins. Oh yeah, did you read his book? I I, I listened to the audiobook oh, like yeah, halfway through, not the whole thing. But right. but that guy, man, he's insane, dude. You know, just his whole story, everything about him. Um so that, you know, just challenging myself mentally yeah. is kind of what you know, and physical fitness is to <clears> me <throat> the easiest right, you know, way to do it. 
Yeah. Not mentally, but like just you can go and put yourself in any hard situation. You yeah. Want to, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I don't do sobriety meetings. Um, Those don't work for you. I mean, you just don't. I'm not. I don't want to say they don't work for me. I just. I mean, I don't necessarily like them, um, and I. I just, I just, I don't feel the need to go to them, so I don't. Yeah. I mean, it would probably help me right. in the end to build a social, sober, you know, right. group. But I'm gonna I get just, you into some meetings, bro. <laughs> yeah. I think it's gonna be good. For you. Well, yeah. So I don't. You I know, think a big thing I is know that what you're saying. it helps I know what other. You're saying. It helps other people. Exactly. Boom. It's like part of the mindset how you were saying that you went through, which is cool. Which is probably part of the reason you're, you know, still sober today. Is like that mindset you have, where it's like you're no longer looking at life at like, you know, what can like you all do for me it's like part of you know it's in you flipped it a little bit you know like what how can you make the world better how can you add to the lives of other people which is it's interesting i was talking to my buddy about that uh the other day like he's maybe about a year sober and he was like working in a, an albertson's like decorating cakes in the back and he was saying that his boss a couple weeks ago got mad at him because like you know he wasn't being efficient she's like i did all these cakes in this amount of time and you only did this and he's like well He's talking to me, he's like, I was thinking I only make like twelve fifty an hour, so I'm gonna do twelve fifty an hour worth of work. Like I'm not gonna bust yeah. my ass off for this bullshit job and right. you know, when I go home for the day, when I clock out, I'm gonna take all these cupcakes and take all this stuff <laughs> home. And then he said he had like a change where it's like it doesn't really matter, like I can't be justifying things like that in my head. Like when I go to work, I'm gonna be productive and I'm gonna see what I can offer that job. Like it doesn't matter if it's yeah. a big corporation like Albertsons. It's about me and how I feel and my integrity. So it's yeah, like right. cool seeing that flip when people progress in sobriety and like that's like how he looks at it now. It's like what he can give to the job instead of what he can like take from it or like justify. Well, I'm only making twelve fifty an hour, so I'm gonna do that amount of work. You know, yeah. Yeah, dude. I that's, think that's, that's such a good point that you just wrong. brought up because that's, especially knowing you, like, I, I mean, I love I love that story, but it's how it's about how it's I'm gonna see what I can do. Because I think that's, I mean, look at just how you're helping your brother. Mm-hmm. Like, like if you're able to do that, get through an 18-year-old kid, some other people will benefit from hearing your stories. And especially the fact that you were able to do it the last time without rehab. Like, you were able to do it just kind of like, just looking at yourself very rawly. But, but you know, if you're looking at the meetings, that's kind of your old mindset creeping back in, right? You're like, well, I don't know if it's really necessary for me to go. It might be necessary for someone else for you to go. Yeah, I see that's that, like that's, what he's saying. Like it could be very helpful. That's that what sense. I struggle with because, like, I feel like I could, g- maybe I could probably give back. You know, I know yeah. I could give back to somebody, right. um, but I just I th- I can't think of a, a sobriety group that I would fit into. You know right. what I mean? But yeah. I, I wonder if probably I'll, war. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I, I, yeah. I, I really think you would like the Monday meetings. I yeah. really do. I mean, I don't know much about your program, but yeah. I know that I love exercise and, yeah. you know, I'm sober. So yeah. those two things go hand in hand for me. Um, right. But yeah, like AA and uh, I don't, I, I don't have anything against AA. I just, the way I think about sobriety in life, it just doesn't necessarily, it, it, it wouldn't fit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, and I'm not going to go. Have I'm, you gone to good meetings, any that you've enjoyed um, ever? Because I, yeah. I, I know that the pro, Wasatch, sometimes the meetings that were gone to, at least when I was there, were not good meetings and you can actually have bad meetings yeah out there like if you had gone to any that you actually enjoy or you saw benefit from i mean you just yeah. don't you just don't look at it like you kind of want to move on like you don't want to remind your is it like something like where you don't want to remind yourself every day that you're a drug addict uh it's it's kind of good that question. honestly i do like having that space like i don't this is abnormal for me right. sitting around and having talk a conversation about, your, yeah. about sobriety and addiction just because I mean, it's kind of abnormal. I, I live with my mom's right now, right? Right. And she's an alcoholic, and she's uh, I don't know, she's got mental illnesses, you know, right. things like that. So I, I'm, it's almost daily with her that I'm going through this struggle, and then there's my brother as well, you know. Right. What I mean? But like, I don't talk about myself and you know my experiences and you know things like like this you right. know, very yeah. often. So. Yeah. But um, yeah. How how did we get there? No, it, well, it's, it's interesting. I mean, it's a different, it, it, you know, I, well, he was asking you what you do to stay sober, okay. you know, like kind of like what your daily routine looks like. And I know the business that you're, that you're getting ready to go into. I know that you believe that that, that helps. What is, what is the well. business? So it's a, it's a CBD retail business. Oh, nice. Um, 
Are you guys familiar with what CBD is? I am a little bit, but I'd like to hear more. Like, yeah, you should definitely explain it. Listeners yeah. would like to also. I know it's been big for a couple of years, and I have a bunch of friends in Orange County that have started their own like CBD exactly. companies, either like the tinctures or ones that you can vape, and mm-hmm. you know they're all in recovery too. Which yeah. like at first, if you look at it, you're like, oh, that's weird. Wow. It's like you know, it comes from weed, but it's not exactly weed at all. It's almost it's a different plant. It's wow. from hemp. So like, why don't you explain like what it is and like how it benefits? you know you or people in general yeah so yeah Frank has some good contacts for you just on the side sorry keep going but yeah he he has some good people that have done some good things wow um, so keep going all right uh yeah cbd so I'll, I'll just share my personal experience with it um so i was maybe six months into sobriety so about a year ago um and my cousin was starting a cbd manufacturing business out in colorado and uh, he started talking to me about it and trying to get me involved as a salesperson and just asking me, you know, do I know anything about CBD or what it is? And to me, I'm in recovery, you know. The only place, the only reason I knew what CBD was was because someone brought it into Wasatch. The, and got in trouble. Have, and got in trouble. Yeah. And got ki- and they, they threw it, they, they took it and con- confiscated it, you know what I mean? But right. So in my head, it's like CBD, that's bad, you know, like I don't want anything to do that's with it. Weed. That's, that's gonna weed. That's going to get me high. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, but I did some research and it turns out it's, it's just like you said, you know, it's, it's the, it's a cannabinoid that's taken from hemp, right? It's extracted from hemp, um, is there is THC in hemp, but it's a very low amount of THC and, uh, it do, has no psychoactive effect. It doesn't get you high. You don't get endorphins off of it. You, there's no dopamine release. There's right. nothing that happens like that. It's just, it's, it's sort it's of like a body high, right? It's not even, it's not even a body high. It's like, uh. <laughs> Imagine the most mild sedative you've ever taken in your life. You know what I mean? Like, it's just there's a lot. There's there's quite a bit that goes into the uh, uh, the science of it. But uh, let me finish this first part real quick. So, I'm talking to my cousin about it, and he keeps telling me he wants to send me out a sample. Um, I don't I don't I don't want to take it. You know, because in my in my mind I'm working at this point too, right? And I'm getting drug tested at my my job. So I I don't want to test positive for THC. Um, and I don't want to take anything that's going to compromise or put me at risk, right? Right. That's going to and set off recovery. that. Exactly. Because, like, in my head, as an addict, like, you can take one thing and then that, that, on, that entourage effect kind of happens where, right. you know, you start, you know, mm-hmm. obsessing about it again. Right. Um, but, yeah, eventually uh, I, I keep talking to him and he convinces me. He shows me this thing. It's called a C of A, a Certificate of Analysis. Uh, showing me has no THC in it and I researched CBD just to kind of see you know what other people are saying about it um, and uh, I tried I take it I don't I don't notice anything immediately like I was saying uh, I, I took it I used it it was a tincture a little oil tincture yeah and uh, I used it right before I went to the gym and uh, you know you, you don't notice an apparent effect but I, I noticed like my I was doing cardio and it was easier to do cardio right, right. like um, or I wasn't like thinking about I wasn't thinking as much either and for me that's a huge problem is thinking yeah. too fucking much you right know what I mean? like I'm always like overthinking everything and especially coming from addiction that's huge in addiction right because you're obsessing over that drug right. mm-hmm. you know that is what it is it's an obsession and uh, I never lost that part of my mind like even still to this day like I, I'm not using drugs but I still like I'm obsessing over something you know what I mean? Yeah, me so too. like we working out, that, yeah. yeah, like working yeah. out has been huge, dude, for right. me. Like that, I can obsess over that, you know. <clears throat> right. And right now, like I said, I've been slacking, but like I kind of go in spurts up and down, you know, yeah. where I'll just go really hard and then right slack off and then call myself a lazy bitch and then get back yeah. on. You know? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, just CBD helped me with that. Like it honestly did. Uh, it uh, it honestly helped ease that obsessive part of my mind and especially over a longer period of time it's helped really yeah like i honestly wholeheartedly like, believe that like you can slow your mind down like you slow down like it's just that i don't obsess over much anymore like even coming here to like talk on this podcast i was nervous to do but i never would have done it a year ago you know what i mean even yeah. sober even sober yeah dude, fuck no <laughs> so you, you can really attribute that a lot to cbd i, I think so too but also we need to take in more you know more variables sure you know, your life is honestly because i i've also my brain's been healing you know what i mean it says absolutely it takes 18 months for your brain to recover from addiction is what is my understanding of it right so i'm sure that has a role to play in it as well 
but CBD could have helped kind of accelerate that. Too. What do you think I, I, it does? Yeah, what's like, it look like? like physically for people too, like medicinally and stuff? Yeah, because I know like when I almost had my uh, foot amputated. And then like a little bit after that, I was in sober living. The doctors like told me to start taking CBD for my foot, but they wouldn't let me because I was at sober they living. They told you to take it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like That's I had cool. doctors that were telling me to take it to heal, like help heal and stuff. And then it was like you said, like how when you were at Wasatch, you know, like I was at a sober living and they're like, no, 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 no. They wouldn't let me take yeah. it, even though the doctors were trying to get me to take it too and knew I was in recovery. It's like, I know it can have like a lot of medicinal benefits, yeah. like for injuries or like you know, all sorts of different like things. Yeah, it's uh, it's huge for inflammation. Yeah. And it after researching it, it's crazy how many things uh, are a, a cause or I think a cause or an effect of inflammation, like even Alzheimer's is a cause of inflammation in your brain because of uh, some, some pathways or something's inflamed in your brain. Right. right. So CBD has even been shown to help with things like Alzheimer's for that reason. But uh, for joint pain or something like your foot, all, yeah. almost being amputated you know would have helped r reduce that inflammation which right. just helps with pain in general wow. yeah. what how what is how many how like what does your doses look like you wake up and take one or yeah so that's <clears throat> that's the hardest part is knowing how much to take right and there's so much different information out there like uh one of our competitors i was looking at their website and they're like look you just want to take as much cbd as you can like blast that shit in, drink it by the bottle. You know, that was the impression I was getting, was just, you want to, the more you take, the better you are. Oh, uh, really? When, that's not the case yeah, though. Yeah, that you know can't I mean? be right. No. And it's weird because, uh, and I didn't know this, but uh, I guess sometimes smaller amounts have a better effect than larger amounts. So like five milligrams of CBD could be more effective for you than 25. Right. Um, and that's what I found with me, so I take uh, I use 500 milligram broad spectrum and broad spectrum means uh, it's broad spectrum distillate which is a CBD that's used to make that product right and uh, it doesn't have any THC but it has other cannabinoids in it right because uh, THC is a cannabinoid CBD is a cannabinoid but there's you know a hundred other like hundreds ones. of them. Exactly. Yeah. So instead of just yeah. CBD itself it's all the other ones minus THC exactly and they call that the entourage effect and a lot of people believe in you know using all of the cannabinoids and there's still so much we don't know about I mean right. cannabis that we don't maybe there's ones better than CBD out there that just haven't been discovered yet you know what I mean just because it's such a new thing to research CBD because it was just legalized at the end of 2018, right? Right. So all of these academics and schools are starting to research it, but you know, we just don't know a lot about it right now. Right. What we do know is that CBD is very effective in the treatment of things like pain and anxiety and things like that. Wow. And your grandma loves it. And also it. like you said, yeah. inflammation. And then I've also seen like things where it you know, can ward off uh, like cancer and like other things too, where it's like, you know, in medical journals, like they right. say like, yeah, it's like been shown to have a positive effect with this. We can't exactly correlate it right now, but you know, it's shown to have a positive effect with things like Alzheimer's, like you were saying, other like neurological um, disorders and like things like that, which is, which is really rad. See, but, I mean, you know, and along with that, like what made me a believer, and I was telling you this, but as you guys know, I'm a big UFC fan and one of the biggest pieces of news in the last two months of the, like when Nate Diaz had smoked some CBD yeah. after his fight a couple was years ago, it was a big <laughs> deal. Was he smoked that? He was, was vaping CBD. Yeah. Looked like he was smoking a joint. That well, was, are you saying just a few days ago? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was actually. Yeah. It, uh, what was he smoking there? I was that hearing was, that it was smokable CBD. It was it was CBD flour. Yeah, yeah it was yeah, CBD he flour. He just wanted to get the publicity off it. But he, when he first smoked that thing, CBD had a hor or UFC had a bad reaction to it. They're like, well. It, we can't. It's not against the rules, but it's like they had it. They they had this kind of thing where they were not co-signing it. Now, the mm -hmm. UFC literally just signed a. I don't know if it's a 12-year study or something, but we're almost every single athlete now is is on a CBD regimen for to to actually do a, a, a like study with universities and everything about about uh, its effects in, in recovery and, and everything. So like I mean Dana White, all the, they have doctors. I mean they have all people that are behind it that are saying like. They need this. These these athletes, these high endurance athletes, need CBD. And we're, since we're like the most high endurance you can get, plus they're the most intensive intense drug testing sport in the world too. So you know it's not something that's getting giving you some type of Edge. illegal effect. But yeah. what I'm saying is, when they co-signed on it, I was like, wow. Like maybe I sh I still never tried it. Like it, the same thing. Weed is what's scared me about mm -hmm. it. But he he told me he's gonna allow me to try some. But like yeah. the fact that the, the, the UFC is 
is co-signing is big to me. The largest sports, or, or the sports organization that's known for its the most stringent drug testing policies, and they're allowing this, not only are they allowing that, they're getting a study to prove that it's, it's hugely helpful. That's big. Well, it's like, you know, like a, a year and a half ago with my foot, the doctors were prescribing it for me. And like oh, I didn't know they were prescribing it. I remember. Well, no, because uh, Cold Creek wouldn't let me take it. Oh, yeah, that's right. But my foot doctors were like, you should take this. Like, that's right. And that was, you know, like a, the beginning of 2018. So yeah. You know, in Utah, doctors. In are Utah, me yeah. That's, that's wow. cool. I've never yeah. talked to someone that was actually recommended by a physician. Yeah, no, yeah. he definitely was. Yeah. I remember that now. Yeah. Well, it, I would, but research, Utah was the first place for physicians to recommend CBD, though. In, in 2014. The, Way okay. before but legality. Never, yeah, I've never known. So like, that's cool, though. That's yeah. crazy that they were telling you to take it. Well, it's because it. I almost had to amputate, and I went from, like, a, a plastic surgeon to a wound clinic. So I think they're kind of, like, not sure what to do or exhausting all options. But it, it, the doctor was like, you should definitely start taking CBD. Like, this is going to wow. help you recover. But since wow. I was, like, just starting my recovery and in sober living, they're like, no. Nah, they're you're like, not gonna nah. Take it. Sorry, yeah, bro. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, Frank. We're not going to let you yeah. just roll in with the CBD bottle <laughs> and tell everyone that yeah. you're special and you get to take it because you're foot. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. But that's, but it's crazy. They read, they were recommending it. So yeah. you take it in the morning and then when? So I, I, mean, I take it about four times a day, maybe four or five. Right. And it's a 500 milligram. Is it just like a little tincture? Like, yeah, you know, it's just a little bottle with yeah. a little dropper okay, in it. Yeah, dropper. And I take like a quarter of a dropper when I do it. Right. So one full dropper is 15 milligrams. And I take about a quarter. I'm just going to call it five because right. I don't want to do that math. So right. five milligrams yeah. at a time. But, um, and, and yeah, I mean, and I've it's just, just it's just helped your brain. I, I mean, think what, so. is that what, what the reward you're getting from it? Like, you think it's just helping you not go in a circle with compulsion and, I think so. I think it's definitely aided in that kind of obsessive. Just calm me a little bit. Yeah. And that's what, so that is what, it's called the endocannabinoid system, and it exists throughout your entire body, right? Right. It's, you know, the central nervous system, same thing as endocannabinoid system. It, and so what that does, though, is that keeps your body in a state of homeostasis, right? Right. So if you're hungry, it's your endocannabinoid system sending those, uh, what would I call it, neurotransmitters or, or whatever, those molecules around your body saying, hey, go here because he needs to eat. You need to tell his brain he needs to eat, right? right? So those are the things that your body is responding to in response to those. And that's part of your in- survival ACS, compulsions. your endocannabinoid system. Exactly, wow. yeah. And so that's what it does is it keeps you in that state. So, I mean, that could be a reason why, hey, you're anxious. Why are you anxious? You know, calm down. That's helping my body kind of tell me that. But it also actually reacts with, uh, so this is where I don't want to, I'm probably going to mess this up because I'm not smart enough to memorize it, but I have written it down. Um, what it does is, so the, uh, the same receptors that something like a benzos react to. Right. The GABA. Um, the GABA, the GABA right. receptors. That's what a benzo would attach to, to calm right. you down. It, it creates more of those neurons that attach to the GABA receptors that give you that big influx and like act as a, you know, and slow you down, slow you down. Right. So what CBD does, this is one reason it helps anxiety is it doesn't attach to the GABA receptor. What it does is it changes the shape of the receptor into a shape that the, the natural, so calming chemical, I think it's called anandamide or something. Yeah. I can't even anandamide, pronounce it. I, think. I can't even pronounce it. I was just it. reading your plan <laughs> the know. other day. So anandamide, it was what it was. Yeah. It's uh, and that is what attaches to the GABA receptor. It, atta- it helps it attach in a way that makes it last longer, basically. So you have the calming effect longer and it's a, it's, it's more solidified basically. It's the same, like a, it's like an SS, SSRI. Yeah. Do you feel do you, taking it that many times a day? You feel like it's addictive thinking, though. You're like, oh, I can't wait to take this shit. It's going to slow me down. No, because you know what I mean? That's a very good question because that's a good that, sign. I mean, I, you're selling me on it to, to try it, but like, I, I wouldn't want to look at it like that. You know what I mean? And yeah. I could see myself looking at it like that. That's a, see, I want to say, I mean, I, I'm going to say no um, because I forget to take it. Oh, uh, okay. I've so gone, I've forget, gone weeks without taking it. That says something. Yeah, you, you know what I mean? To take it. Like, and then I'll notice later, like, oh, shit, I'm uptight. You know, what have I not been doing? What have I been doing? When you say later, you mean later in the day or later? Oh, wait, you're saying sometimes you'll go a couple weeks without. With a couple weeks without yeah. it or a few days. You know what I mean? Or if I've noticed, though, like, the more regular I am with it, like, if it were an actual prescription, the, the better I feel, though. And that's where that's my, been my personal experience. Yeah. So if I take it like five milligrams four times a day, I feel better 
that whole week than if I miss a week entirely. So it's almost like the long game approach. You wouldn't, exactly. it's not like you, you would take one dose of it and be like, it's going to kick in in 15 minutes. I'm stoked. Exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. not like that. It's more like a wellness approach where in like two weeks you might see the benefits of. Yeah. Or even a few <laughs> days later, because I've already like, right. I built up, they say I've heard up to a month, take it for a month and then, you know, reanalyze and see how you feel if it, if you, you, once you first start doing it. I feel like it's similar um, to like the long-term benefits of nutrition. It's like, yeah, I'm not going to feel right. amazing if like I eat a salad for lunch <laughs> instead of like a burrito. It's not like I'm like, wow, <laughs> yeah, one time. Like, I'm loaded. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, after I do it for a couple of weeks, like I'll notice my overall uh, energies okay. levels are up. My sleep is better. Like yeah, it's that makes sense. doing better in the gym. Like, yeah. That'd be bad. That'd be sick. Now, now you do have some, you do have some cases where do you, I don't know if you think it's placebo, but you do have, or maybe it's just based on their, their symptom. You do have sometimes people that they might be administered some and within 10 to 15 minutes, they say, I actually noticed something, Yeah. but it's not a high of it. It's not a psychoactive thing. It's, they notice a fit, like either pain has decreased yeah. or I've, yeah. I mean, I've talked to, and I've, I've witnessed it helping people within minutes of taking it. Um, so, I mean, it's definitely possible that you could take it and notice an effect right after. I mean, but not something that feels or, addictive or maybe not. No, not, not something that feels addictive, but I would say more specifically with pain, you know, right. what I mean? <laughs> like, uh, this, this one guy, uh, I was talking to him about CBD. He knew someone that I was trying to be a vendor for, you know what I mean? I wanted to get in their store and then he wanted to try the CBD. So I'm like, of course, let me come over, you know, tell you a little bit about it and you can try it. Uh, so I went over there and he, he said that Usually it would take him a couple minutes to stand up and get off the couch. You know what I mean? Just a lot of joint pain in his knees. Um, but then he tried the CBD and stood up and then he literally started jumping up and down. You know Whoa. What I mean? So, and he was super happy. I don't, and I don't know this guy super well. I mean, I can't imagine myself reacting like that to anything, but this guy right. was ecstatic. You know what I mean? He was just off the wall about this. You know, it was a, it was a, it was a cool, it was a cool thing to see that, you know, he had this reaction yeah. to it. You, know, you checked the certificate of analysis, made sure there wasn't any like morphine or uh, <laughs> yeah. CHC in it, which I, I think is an important point to note because I think CBD also like at Wasatch got a bad name because there are smoke shops around here. And I know what you're trying to do is take it out of the smoke shops and make it like the actual consultations, very nice, have it look very nice inside. But yeah. people in the smoke shops, they do have stuff that are like synthetic THCs in them, yeah, right? Like there are some of those out there to out where like, because I remember clients that were using it, the, the CBD at Wasatch were getting loaded. And the, you know what I mean? Well, they were I like, remember when I was there, the sober living, I mean, everyone was getting that, right. smoking it, and it was this big thing or whatever. And they were the feeling they were loaded, getting, whatever, yeah. whatever they were taking. Yeah. So I, I guess it's a point to note that this is different than that. Like, we're not trying to discuss something on the podcast. Or, and, and as a podcast, we're not necessarily promoting it at all, but it, this is Cameron's experience. No, but. yeah, and this is what I recommend to anyone that's curious about it. Like, just do the research yourself. Obviously, if you're going to take CBD and you're coming from a, a past of addiction, research it, see other people's experiences, learn how it works. But I mean, from what, if, if it's true CBD, um, hopefully you get it from some, a company you can trust and they have certificates of analysis and everything mm -hmm. like that. That's the biggest problem in the industry is that it's- Tainted product. It, just the regulations. The like, regulations, it's exactly. It's not like there's no, you know, agency or whatever to say like certify it unless you do it yourself to yeah, get the right. testing done but i know like my friends companies um like when they, they try to they make sure that the the plants they're sourcing it from have a maximum of like three percent thc or something to begin with yeah oh, something really? like that the hemp like otherwise it's not hemp otherwise it's classified like as a marijuana plant gotcha but so like the plants to start with don't have more than i think it was three percent it might even be lower than that like mm -hmm. a certain percentage so they of go all the way through their supply chain and verify like all yeah, the different stages exactly but it's also broad spectrum like you were saying like it's everything else except for that yeah interesting mm -hmm. but that's a good that's a good tip to maybe think of yeah you I might can't, be doing that already. It's gonna, I, imagine imagine what it's going to look like 10 years from now and how it's going to be linked to I mean, I've always said this. I mean, <clears throat> I don't know if I want to go here on this, but but I will. <laughs> <laughs> but just 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 even just pot, you know, regular pot is not everybody. But like I've I've watched it help dudes get off heroin. 
You know for sure. I mean? Well, so I, I know if I did it, I'd be yeah, using it again within a certain <clears throat> matter of time. I know Frank has a similar, yeah, a very similar story. So I don't, I don't but know. There if are I people would. that helps. Yeah. Like it's like when you know how many times I think I I've said this before. Like, you know, yeah, weed for you has for kept me out of treatment. Yeah. You know, that's kind of how I would always get off opiates, but I never really liked the smoke. Right. So was, I looked at it so medicinally, like I like I can't stop doing these pills. So I'd look, I would look at the weed just like that. Like I'd smoke it and it would trip me out so bad. <laughs> I, and I'd be like, I'm ruining my life. Like it almost like oh, hyper focus, <laughs> like what I was doing with, with like the, the Roxy's yeah. and be like, dude, what? And like, and like help me create a brand new awareness around what I was doing. Yes. You know, but, and, but that ain't, but that, but that everyone's different. So See, for me, if I don't smoke weed all the time, like weed scares the crap out of me. Yeah. Like, I always say <laughs> like, that weed is like the hardest drug. Yeah. Like, I love when you the definition that. of a hard drug. Yeah. Like, like can, on your mind, like, I like do, heroin. Eh. I can do heroin. I can do crack. I can do meth and be in public and be fine. If I like take a couple huge bong rips, I'm going to be freaked <laughs> the fuck out. Dude. Like, yeah. So true. Just so man, weird. But the then shape. if like when I was in high school, I did it every day. Yeah, so get, I'm like numb to it. You get in shape. But it's yeah, you get in weed shape. Yeah, yeah it's so true. <laughs> yeah, that's it's the so crazy. That, that. That's what. That's how. Like, like that's how I used it to sk- it, like scared me. Yeah, there's no way I'm calling to pick up after I take a bong. Rip. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. <laughs> dude, I, when Frank had said that, I had never heard it that way, but I'd felt it that way. Like, it's so true. Like, yeah, you're like, dude, I'm not gonna do. I, I'm, I'm not. Dude, doing my anything. life's gonna be in tip top shape. Like. And I'm and I'm hating it. Like I hate all my flaws right now. Yeah, yeah. Like, like it's so true. Yeah, it's because yeah. all all those other drugs take you away from yourself. When weed makes you sit there with yourself, dude. Yeah, yeah. look at all that. That's the introspective drug. That is yeah, true. True. That's why, like, I never understood people using it. Like, like. Like some people do, you know, they use it to calm down and relax. I guess there's different strands and shit. I don't know none of the stuff that I. <laughs> Right. What I was I was using, but or they're in weed But shape. like it didn't do that. Like I people make, for me like it made me if I smoked at night I was up until four in the morning. Really? There's like no way. I'm, there's no sure. way I'm going to sleep. Just like obsessing just, about your life. Just creating. <laughs> just creating. You know. I can just imagine the videos we would be getting from Dustin yeah. if he was on that. Like <laughs> just be. Oh my god. No. Life is. Oh, I no, can just imagine. I but but it. But yeah, so, but like, so that where I'm going, where I was going, you know, 10 years from now, like where it's all going with the CBD and how they're, they're getting, like they're make they're using it better, you know, like they're, they're getting to the point where like it really can be used for like these people with pain right. and medicinal and even addiction and mental health. I liked what you were saying about, I do that bad, you know, where I go in a circle in my head, I'm obsessed about it. I'm just like, please break the loop. Yeah. I don't want to be going in this. I'm trapped, almost trapped in my mind. Exactly. Yeah. And like, so like if there's something like that, that's not addictive that can, you know, cause obviously I can't take Xanax, right. you know, or I'm not, I'm not a candidate for anything. And I know, I know that, it, it, you know, you know, going out at, you know, 11 o'clock at night and doing 75 burpees in my front yard is a little weird to get out of my head. You know what I mean? Like, Dude, it might be worth, it might be worth was, trying it, man. There was an easier way to, to help with that obsess, uh, you know, this thinking that of mine and all yeah, of that them. obsession and, and all just, of ours, yeah, I'm sure, you know, yeah. I just feel like there just needs to be a distinction made and that's ultimately up to the person doing it, which is like what you were saying earlier is like the honesty with like how it affects you, you know, because I would say like, you know, for me, weed is addictive, but I'm not going to blame the substance because I see how much good Correct. it does for other people yeah. or I also see other people using it responsibly, you know, but for me, it wasn't, you know, right. So it's like, I agree that I think it should, I like the direction it's going in our country and all these states where it's like pushing towards the legalization, but it's just like alcohol. You know, I see a bunch uh-huh. of people who have yeah. a wine at dinner or it's like, you know, doctors even say like red wine a couple of times a week is good Helps for you. Your heart, yeah. But it's like, for me, no, it's like, sorry, I got plans for Christmas. Like I'm not, I can't, <laughs> not, I can't drink right now. I'm going to be in fucking Mexico <laughs> in six, six months, months yeah. from now, you know, like bringing people across the border, being Coyote Frank. Yeah, again. <laughs> being Coyote Frank again. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but it's like that's how you have to be honest with yourself and yeah. see how it affects you that's why it's like i yeah. see these young kids with so much like coming at them like oh weed's not addictive it's nah, not a problem it's whatever. like you know they have to kind of address that themselves and be these, honest with it themselves yeah. which is yeah, hard these, to do sometimes these but. young kids yep. should not be smoking weed you yeah. know and the with well, the camera's and, point and, and, and the, and the brain's not are, developed yet people are taking it 
too far, just like we're saying now with the dabs. I mean, that shit is dangerous, you know? And then the other, what's the other stuff? The, the stuff that's causing people to go crazy. Spice? Spice. Spice. Oh, <laughs> gosh. You know, you know what I mean? I mean, that it's just like, it's still just drug. coming PCP. out with all kinds of bad shit that's, you know, they're, instead of just keeping it where it needs to stay and going, right. going to, like people obviously take it in the wrong direction too, you know, you've seen a lot Absolutely. of that. Absolutely. Well, good, dude. I'm thankful you're on, bro. It's been good to meet you. Sorry when you came in, I was dark. Look, man, it was like it was like four forty-five <laughs> in the dark. morning, bro. I was trying to work out. Like, I don't know. No, so. I get it. No one wants to be interrupted <clears throat> mid-workout. No, either, and I was just, so. you know, I was just cu- kind of coming out of it. And Dustin was in his zone. It's all good. He, fortunately, you're you're a fitness guy. It's part of your recovery. So you anytime, know what, you know what dude, you do. want to start rolling up here. Where are you where are you living right now? In Lehigh. Oh, you live in Lehigh. So, so you I drove up this morning. An hour away. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> challenging him to make it to Monday meetings. I'm going to challenge him that. to come with me to those. What Monday I meetings? D- the ones here. The, yeah. Oh. If you can, like Monday. Yeah, it's the it's workout and then the meeting. Week. Yeah. Yeah. I love to work out, man. I, I would yeah. come up here to work out and sit, sit with yeah. in a meeting come for see sure. What, yeah, come up and see what we got going on, dude. Yeah. We got a sick little group. Like, we have badass, badass discussions, kind of just like these, you know, and then. Mm-hmm. And you work out before the meeting. Yeah, right? we get our minds right, get get high before the yeah, meeting. Yeah, exactly. That's smart, you know? man. Get those endorphins yeah. flowing. That's what that's, he I mean, said that's, 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 the, whole, that's the whole thing. Yeah. I mean, you get in here and we're all sweating together and then, you know, everyone gets more comfortable and then you go right in there and. We have some sick conversations because of that. I think because of that endorphin lift, everyone's awake. We just didn't, you know, we just didn't roll out of whatever. Yeah. We, we got we got high through the exercise and then roll in and have some sick ass conversations. That's you know? a big part of the work philosophy is like, I mean, the amount of discussions and groups they have after workouts are pretty incredible. I'll bet it goes a lot deeper too. Yeah. Because you're building a connection, yeah. working out, and then you're already feeling more comfortable, right? Yeah. Your oh, defenses yeah. are down. Yeah. You're like, what am I going to battle? I can't even hold my, I can't even hold my yeah stand up because if i'm over there squatting and sticking my ass out in front of all of you i'm probably yeah. gonna talk about be more comfortable talking about my addiction in front of <laughs> yeah, you too. exactly you know what i mean so, yeah exactly. no, that's, just, that's so true yeah you know, I, was, I was giving one of the clients like a ride home last night and she was just say, saying how thankful she was for war and like what we got going on in the community we've been building and it was really cool seeing like the change and the honesty and like how she felt because it wasn't just like she was coming just to cross a box off, you know, like yeah. on the checklist or yeah. whatever, do something for quarter because like family pressure, it's like, you know, she wants to like keep coming back and just loves and she's like, it's like a family, you know, I love all you guys, like appreciate what you do for me. And it, it was really cool to wow, see that, man. that is yeah, cool, the yeah. community and culture yeah, that, we that gotta, we're building. It's because of that, that, that exercise too. Like we, <clears> so we cool. do hikes and stuff. So like Wednesday, we're doing a big hike and then we'll do our, like a group at the top. Oof. Yeah, and just chill That's up there. Good. Yeah, it's pretty sick. We did a couple of weeks ago. We did like a big long one. It's like a, about a two-hour hike. We met like 5:30 a.m. on a Saturday morning here, and got on the mountain. We were trying to get on the mountain to watch the sun, and so we yeah, were on the mountain making the hike about 6 6:15, and then we just watched that sun, dude. I mean, I'm just, I'm just it's all about helping that are like this. helping I mean, people to capture new highs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like what? Like I wish I still want to get high. You know just what I mean? Daring I just, people I just to do try it. things yeah. that they wouldn't otherwise. You know, like you said, fifty burpees. Like you know, I think that was like on Thursday or something. It's like yo, the, today when you wake up, go outside and do fifty burpees, and it's like yeah. it helps you when you're in your head. But you wouldn't just go try that on your own. You know, right? Yeah, like, yeah you absolutely wouldn't. Yeah. Well, yeah, like we've done it. So we've done these experiments with people. These dudes, like, like uh, one dude that we're working with, like got the dual diagnosis, like mental health bad, and. Mm-hmm struggles way bad in the morning so i just like just have him go outside and do 50 burpees like in his grass slow just up down just get down to his chest it's, he's pissed right he's he's pissed <laughs> yeah you know he's Why am just I like this? i was this morning I look you freaking know? stupid this and then, is yeah. and, but then, and, then and then it, it right. was and then it was to walk for 10 minutes that bro this dude's tech bro i feel so good man like <laughs> feel so good like this is he's taking selfies <laughs> like, <laughs> sending them to me once like, he's done 50 burpees dude a 10 minute walk yeah. to yeah. just get your mind going as opposed to just motherfucking the, re- the the day at the beginning like we like like what this what you know yeah. what we all kind of do like we we're trapped a little bit you know and and so that i there's just ways out you know yeah. there's ways out and it sets your tone for the day. Doing yeah, that setting and- the tone. Or what about just walking out your front door and going for a jog? Mm-hmm. Simple jog. No, nothing nutty. Yeah. 
but just getting people moving and then you know we do then then maybe a 15 minute walk with listening to an audio book and then send out three healthy text messages you know some boom mom thankful for you you know yeah. send one out to your buddy hey bro sorry i was being a dick last night <laughs> i love you bro smiley face you yeah. know what i mean like yeah, absolutely like regrounding yourself and facing that emoji with the with the fist yeah, bump, fist bump. Yeah. yeah you know just just stuff like that and that that would be our that's like our spiritual work of the program you know well it's important too because without people like you they wouldn't know to do that right like even me i there was this guy i worked with this big black dude everyone called him the black hulk right All right he took me under his wing and he showed me you know i worked out with him and uh, he showed me all of his workouts and he showed me how hard he went. He had a really old fashioned way of thinking about everything. Like a lot of fucking reps and you're not going to be able to walk tomorrow. Yeah. So, I mean, right. that, but you know, without him, I would have never, I, I wouldn't appreciate or have the outlet that I do now. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you're, you're teaching them how to fish. You yeah. Know? So yeah. that's fucking important. Absolutely. Yeah. That's sick. Yeah. Yeah. So anytime you want to come up, bro, like come up, I appreciate you coming up. Yeah, this I appreciate is, it. Yeah, this is nuts yeah, for me, dude. Yeah. Do you know how many podcasts I've listened to, dude? <laughs> yeah, so, like, the idea the of, time. like, sitting here, like, yeah, to this me, was a good just... one, too. This was sick. We'll have you on again. Yeah, absolutely. As shows, we'll t- talk more about the CBD stuff and talk more about your business. And, and uh, yeah, I think, I think, that's, right I think that's an interesting topic. We could, we could do a whole nother one. Like, um, absolutely. The science of it or just even more in-depth stuff. And just yeah. the more you, you uh, learn about it and experiment and get other – testimonials of people doing it and it helping you know yeah maybe you can even bring him to try it we'll see yeah can, yeah we'll can, see can keep it. us abreast of what's going my on. dad takes it my dad ta- does he well he takes <laughs> yeah that's cool i think he takes the gummy bears or is that weed no they have i don't, I don't know i know that's a product yeah they do they do have cbd edibles yeah for he, sure. t- he takes he takes like for his neck pain dude he's wow played college football and he says it helps yeah yeah that's he, takes, another... he takes this rub sh- stuff too. It's called rub. <laughs> Have you heard of that? Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. There's That's one of his products. Rubs it on his the... neck. Rubs it on like his joints and stuff. He's he's like 66 and active and yeah. His dad's a beast. He swears by you it. You wouldn't think he's 66 and he's in but best shape of any one of us here. <laughs> my grandma takes it. She takes uh, the rub. Yeah, that's interesting. My girlfriend's mom is the same way. I mean, she the can of butter. She like prescribes it for everything, you know. If you're like, oh, I have a headache, oh, put some can of butter on your forehead. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, I got like I got sore knees. Or, like, oh, put can some can of rub some can of butter. On. I yeah. swear. So, it's so much better. It's like, it seems so much better than saying here, take a zanny. Right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> even yeah. though I haven't. Here's even, an oxycod. Like, yeah. Everything will feel great <laughs> here. <laughs> lower tab, and I, and I I I think that's where this this is gonna go. Like helping people realize. With severe pain, you know, I did that o- that opidemic, that uh, commercial. Did yeah, you guys, guarantee you've, you've seen him seen on that? YouTube. Guarantee you've anyway, seen him. It, like went viral. Yeah, yeah it's all every, but, it's on so, all the ads. But if you, did it. you ever look at the comments? People were hating on me. <laughs> well, I didn't know. You can't, that, you I just you can't read comments. Bro, I, I didn't went go down to the rabbit hole. The I video. felt dark. <laughs> no. Dude, you have to understand that's YouTube, bro. Yeah. Like that is YouTube. That's what people do. But, but like, I, I watch. I see it every time it's before a video when I'm watching on my iPad. I didn't even go to the actual video itself. I went. I just see it. I saw the comments is disabled. I couldn't see any comments on it. Well, so it, it might have disabled them after. It was yeah. fine. Like <laughs> some of true. them, a lot of them were good, but some of them were p- pissed, p- pissed off people who need pain pills. Oh, I could you see that. You know what I'm saying? Or like, they well, think you're I just need them. I, you know, I have this and this and this. And yeah, some have it, a legit complaint. C- legit c- complaint. Everyone's well, yeah, entitled I mean, their own opinions. There, there's but. a there's a reason for opiates, you know. But, right. But there could be something better yeah, out there. Absolutely, I, I, exactly. I agree. I, yeah. I, I think it's old school medicine. It's deca- It's dozens of years old. Doesn't over a hundred years old. I, I found I was crazy when I got off opiates. I realized that ibuprofen works. <laughs> it's so funny. It's so true. <laughs> like, I always laugh. It's amazing, dude. <laughs> yeah. Like I had like when you had pain. Yeah. I like, just oh, think I like what I've done to my body through all the opiates and heroin. Like I've. I made it so it doesn't work. I've numbed myself to the doses so it doesn't work for pain response anymore. Uh, like yeah. Ibuprofen would work better for me than a fucking oxycodone. Absolutely. Right now, yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, they don't work for like pain. They, they just make you feel better about having pain. You're like, ah, oh, this is actually fun. Yeah, it's not bad. It's, but like, <laughs> yeah. Whereas, 
you know, ibuprofen like takes away the pain. Yeah. It's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> crazy, man. Well, thanks for coming on, bro. How, how can people find you? Uh, Dog, you, are you on the social? Yeah, I'm on Instagram. What's your Instagram? The social. Uh, I tagged it on mine. It's, yeah, he tagged it on ahead his. Say what it is. Uh, my, my personal is C underscore breezy on Instagram. Yeah. My, my company's is Exalt CBD. Ex- at Exalt CBD. At Exalt. Uh-huh. E-X-A-L-T. Uh-huh, exactly. CBD. Yeah. Sick. So yeah, find yeah. me on there. Yeah, bro. We'll have you on again. Thanks for thanks for coming on. Absolutely. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks yeah, for sure. sure. It's a guys. cool experience. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. And then Frank, you want to say the war ones? Oh yeah, it's like at war addiction for Instagram or just workout addiction recovery dot com. We got a new website. Yeah. Let us know nice. what you think. Yeah, for sure. We're on Facebook too, so and oh, yeah. and sharing these videos and also the comments that we do get from people from even different states saying that much it helped. Keep those coming. We'll read them on air the ones we get and yeah keep sharing the message yeah thanks for listening guys we are, we're also getting it on uh, on spotify too the spotify nice. podcast but we've had problems with like the the feed but yeah that'll be live in like another week or two so nice it's a different platform you can listen on very cool thanks guys 